will continue this in the tutorial class. 29th lecture, properties of Z-transforms. We uh, had started one example last time and we wish to complete this example before going to others. And the example was a finite duration sequence which is a to the n finite duration 0 less than equal to n less than equal to n minus 1 and a is positive. It could be greater than 1, it could be less than 1, there is no constraint on a. <coughs> so, finite duration therefore, the z transform always exists and it is 0 otherwise. 0 otherwise. The z transform of this if I apply the definition then this is n equals 0 this is the only range over which the transform the sequence exists n equal to 0 to n minus 1 a to the n x of n z to the minus n and naturally uh, this can be written as summation a z inverse to the power n and therefore the summation is 1 minus a z inverse 1 minus a z inverse to the power capital N. If the first term was not unity, this is the common ratio a z inverse. If the first term was not unity, then you would have to have you have to write the first term first. Okay, this is the summation. And uh, <coughs> what would be the region of convergence? The whole excluding z equal to 0. Now, why that occurs can be seen from here x sub z equal to 1 minus a z inverse to the power n 1 minus a z inverse. The point that I wanted to bring out by asking this question was that this summation is unconditionally valid. It is convergent for without any conditions on a z inverse. Whereas, if it was infinite, if the upper limit was infinity, then it required a z inverse mod to be less than 1. All right. Here, there are no conditions because it is a finite summation. All right. Now, this I can write as, suppose I multiply the numerator by z to the n and divide by z to the n. All right. I multiply the denominator by z and multiply by z. I want to get rid of the inverse powers and therefore, what I do is I multiply the numerator by z to the n. If I multiply then I must divide by this. So, 1 minus a to the n z to the minus n 1 minus a z inverse and you see that and you see that I can write this as 1 over z to the n minus 1 if I take this two then z to the n multiplies this. So, I get z to the n minus a to the n and here I get z minus a which makes the poles and zeros obvious in the z plane. And you notice that <coughs> there is indeed a pole of order n minus 1 at the origin and therefore, the origin cannot be in the ROC the poles are all poles are at the origin and how many n minus 1 of them I cannot show by crosses. So, I say simply n minus 1 at order pole and the zeros are contributed by z to the n minus a to the n except for except for this factor z minus a. z minus a is a factor in z to the n minus a to the n that is why z equal to a is not a pole z equal to a is not a pole, it is neither a 0 because there are there is cancellation. So, in order to find the zeros, we have to solve this equation z to the n equal to a to the n except for except for z equal to a. z equal to a is not permitted as a solution of this because z equal to a cancels out with the corresponding pole. And you can see that <coughs> this I can write as z uh, equal to a e to the power j 2 pi k divided by n. Is that clear? I write 
1 as e to the j 2 pi k where k is equal to what are the values of k? 1 to n minus 1. 0 is not permitted because if it is 0 then I get z equal to a. z equal to a has to be excluded and therefore the pole 0 plot that I get is like this. You see the mod z for the zeros the mod z is equal to mod a. If I take a as a real quantity without any any harm then I see that the zeros are all located on this axis z equal to a is not a 0 but z equal to a well this radius is a z equal to a e to the j 2 pi by n is a 0 then the next one would be 4 pi by n and so on similarly on the other side okay what is the angle difference between these two 2 pi by n so this circle whose which is defined by mod z equal to a contains all these zeros and all the poles are located at the origin of order n minus 1 and therefore the uh, region of convergence is all z except z equal to 0 is that clear all z except z equal to 0 this is a uh, an example to the point uh, of that theorem which says that if if the time sequence if the sequence is a finite duration then the z transform exists unconditionally and the z transform shall be the whole of z plane except possibly z equal to 0 or z equal to infinity or both here only z equal to 0 is disallowed. Uh, another point that uh, we will take that point later. This, this style of uh, finding out the zeros and poles you shall get uh, very frequently in your uh, lectures on circuit theory, on uh, communication, on uh, control and so on. Whenever you get functions like this, 1 is not 1, 1 is e to the j 2 pi k because there are multiplicity of solutions z to the n equal to a to the n well it has capital n number of solutions of which one we disallowed here and therefore we took only n minus 1 and the only way to generate those solutions if instead of uh, plus 1 it was minus 1 then we would have taken e to the j 2, 2 k plus 1 pi divided by n all right this style of solution one should get used to. The next example that we take is a two sided signal x of n exactly like Laplace transform or Fourier transform which is b to the power n where we assume that b is greater than 0, b is positive and also that b lies between 0 and 1. The plot of this obviously is like this, it is mod n and therefore <coughs> if b is less than 1, if b is between 0 and 1, naturally it starts at 1, then it goes on decreasing like this and similarly on the other side, okay. This is 0, n equals 0, 1, 2 and so on, minus 1, minus 2 and so on. What would happen, now this, we will try to find the z transform of this function. What will happen if b is greater than 1? Will z transform? It will blow up. Will z transform? Therefore, will not exist if b is greater than one. Let us see what what happens to the z transform of this. Our function is x of n equals to b to the power n, and therefore capital X of z. Well, b to the power n exists on both sides. It exists on both sides, and I can write this as a sum of a right-sided signal and a left sided signal. Now however there is no confusion because I can take the 0th sample in one of them. All right? There is no discontinuity, there is no question of discontinuity in a discrete time signal because all signals, all samples are discontinuous, is not it? There is no question of discontinuity. I can take this sample 
in the right sided signal, I can take the rest in the left sided or I can do it the other way around, it does not matter. The result shall be the same. In other words, I can write x of n to start with as b to the power n u of n, this contains the right sided signal including n equal to 0 and the rest of it I can write b to the, what should I write here? Minus n because I have to take the mod of n, therefore it is minus n u of minus n minus 1. So, this is a right sided sequence and this is a left sided sequence and the z transform if it exists, we expect that the ROC shall be an annular region if it exists, all right. Let us see uh, if it exists or not. Now, therefore, capital X of z, I can, I can do it independently. Um, n equals 0 to infinity b to the n z to the minus n this is for the for the right sided sequence and for the left sided sequence it is b to the minus n n equals to minus infinity to minus 1 b to the minus n uh, z to the minus n again and you know the summations of this. This for example is 1 by 1 minus b z inverse all right a g p and this is 1 by 1 minus yes b inverse z inverse all right. The ROCs, the ROCs of this, ROC of this is this is summable only if b z inverse is mod is less than 1 that means z yes zero is not included in the second term yes so minus 1 minus oh there will be a minus 1 <laughs> <laughs> this is all the change that will happen. Minus 1 divided by 1 minus b inverse the inverse. You can do it and see that it is the same thing. Okay? I made a mistake in this sign. This is minus 1. All right. For the first term, the ROC is mod z greater than b. Isn't that right? Mod z greater than b. And for the second term, what is the ROC? Mod c less than 1 by b. Mod c less than 1 by, 1 by b. That is correct. This point must be noted that there is a b inverse here. <coughs> and therefore, if I plot the ROC in the unit, in the z plane, then I get a picture like this. A circle of radius b was less than 1. So, 1 by b is greater than 1. So, we have a circle here of radius let us say b. We assume that b is real. There is no harm in assuming and there is a circle of radius 1 by b and naturally the region of convergence would be the annular region between the two. All right. And you notice that if b is less than 1, then 1 by b must be greater than 1. Therefore, the unit circle must be in the ROC. In other words, b to the power b to the power mod n, the Fourier transform exists, which we have done earlier also. This we have done earlier also. All right. Um, <coughs> if b is greater than 1, if b is greater than 1, by looking at this, Does an ROC exist? No intersection. No intersection, which is another way of saying that the Z transform does not exist. It was clear right from the function itself because the function, if B was greater than 1, then the function itself had, had gone like this. It is a divergent function. It is like this. It goes up like this. Then on the other side also it goes up like this and therefore the z transform shall not exist. It is also clear if you do it blindly, even then you cannot make a mistake because if b is greater than 1, then there is no annular region, there is no intersection between the two ROCs, which is another way of saying that the z transform 
does not exist. All right. <coughs> so, in similarity with Laplace transform, we see that the Z transform expression is important, so is the ROC. We take an example to illustrate this point further. Let us say 1 minus 1 third Z inverse. 1 minus 2 z inverse. We are writing these in a particular form. We are writing this as polynomials in z inverse and there is a reason. Uh, the reason is that we know the inversion of 1 by, we know the inversion of 1 by 1 minus a z inverse. What is the time function? Either a to, a to the un or a to the n u of minus n minus 1. And therefore, if all our functions are expressed like this, we shall be very comfortable. If it is not like this, suppose x sub z is given as a, as a ratio of polynomials in z, then you have to convert them into z inverse. Well, we will come, we'll come to this point a little later. Now, if this is the function and ROC is not specified, let us see what are the possible ROCs. Possible ROCs. We have uh, a pole at... Uh, at one third, one third, and we have a pole at two. Okay, we have a pole at two, and therefore, thank you. I was waiting. When will it come? <laughs> okay, if the poles are one third and two, there are three possible. ROCs. One is, one is outside the unit circle, outside the circle of radius 2, all right, bounded by the farthest pole from the origin. If this is the region of convergence, then naturally what we are asking for is x of n must be right sided sequence, x of n must be RSS. On the other hand, if the region of convergence is, let us say, uh, let me use another color, is let us say, inside this, okay, inside this circle of radius one third, then this corresponds to an x of n which is left sided. On the other hand, if the ROC is uh, this region, that is the region shaded in black, then obviously it is a combination of right sided and a left sided sequence. Now, which pole shall correspond to the right sided sequence one third because it is to be outside and the pole at two shall correspond to the left sided sequence and if you make a partial fraction expansion of this inversion is an elementary problem. <coughs> now uh, one must recognize the possibilities of uh, the ROC and in the three possibilities there is only one sequence which has a Fourier transform and it is the two sided sequence because between one third and two lies the unit circle and unless the unit circle is encompassed within the region of convergence, the Fourier transform does not exist and therefore it is only the two sided two SS which has the Fourier transform. The other two functions do not have a Fourier transform. Now we come to the question of inversion of a z transform. Given x sub z to find x of n, this is the question. Given x sub z to find x of n and here we proceed exactly the similar way as we did in the case of Laplace transform. We argue that capital X sub z is equal to capital X of z is the complex variable r e to the power j omega for a moment we have been using small omega. For a moment, let us use capital omega because this is what we used in the DTFT, all right. Would you permit that or would you allow me to, uh, would you like me to write small omega? It does not really matter. This is only to bring to your memory the inverse Fourier transform relationship. Otherwise, you can use small omega, all right. Small omega or capital omega, both are continuous variables where a small n is a discrete time variable. Okay. This is r e to the power j omega and by definition this is summation x of n r to the n e to the power minus j n omega 
and we said that this obviously is the Fourier transform of x of n r to the power n all right x of n r to the power n have I made a mistake minus n all right r to the power minus n and therefore we can use the inversion of Fourier transform the relationship for inversion of Fourier transform you remember that if if x of n and capital X of omega are uh, Fourier pairs of each other, then X of n is given by 1 over 2 pi, let us recall that relation, integral over 2 pi over one period, capital omega is periodic, X of capital omega is periodic, X of capital omega, then e to the power j n omega, then d omega. All right. Now, if I apply it here, uh, what I have is X of n r to the power minus n this is my function this is my function and this should be the Fourier inverse of capital X of z which is r e to the power j omega all right in other words if the Fourier inverse exists then it shall be 1 over 2 pi integral over a 2 pi capital X of r e to the j omega then we shall have what shall we have e to the power j n omega d omega all right we start from here now <coughs> the other relation was written simply to recapitulate what the fourier inversion is now i write this again x of n r to the power minus n equal to 1 over 2 pi 2 pi capital x of r e to the j omega e to the j n omega d omega. Now, if I multiply both sides by r to the n, if I multiply both sides by r to the n, that is if I want to do away with this, we must bring r to the n on the right hand side and since the integration is over omega, we can bring r to the n inside, inside the, the integration, that is I can bring r to the n here. Then you see that this two can be combined into r e to the j omega to the power n all right is that okay and what is r e to the j omega isn't this precisely z then therefore my integral becomes 1 by 2 pi integration over 2 pi capital x sub z then z to the power n <coughs> now we have a problem over with d omega all right z equal to r e to the j omega and therefore dz equals to r is a constant we are integrating our variable of integration is capital omega r is a constant and therefore what we are doing actually is integrating over a circle of radius r all right so we get j r e to the j omega then d omega and therefore, d omega I can replace by d z over j z r e to the j omega is simply z therefore, j z and my relationship therefore becomes <coughs> it becomes x of n equals to 1 over 2 pi now integration I will not write 2 pi now the reason will be clear in a moment z to the n then I have d z over j times z and j I can bring here and division by z means that I should modify the power of z to z to n minus 1 instead of n all right and this integration although I have introduced z as the variable z has two components the magnitude and the angle it is the angle only which is being varied and when the angle goes from 0 to 2 pi or theta to 2 pi plus theta what we are doing is we are going round a circle of radius r once all right and we are going in the anti clockwise direction and therefore this fact the fact that we are integrating over a circle on a circle of radius r all right r is a constant we indicate by means of a circle here and with an arrow that is we go over an arrow and this 
this is a contour, this the symbol for contour integration. We are integrating over a contour and therefore, we, we indicate this by contour integration. Contour integration always has to come with a contour and the contour is usually denoted by gamma. Now, gamma in this case is a circle of radius r. I am sorry, gamma, gamma is mod z equal to r. Question, where should this r be? It must be in the region of convergence. Otherwise, you cannot make an integration, all right? So, any r shall do, isn't that right? Any value of r within the ROC shall do because the integral shall be independent of r. All right, r only occurs inside the integral sign, but it will occur in such a manner that is these terms will conspire amongst themselves so that x of n becomes independent of r as long as r is in the ROC, is in the region of convergence. And therefore, finally, my formula for inversion of Z transform, the most general formula becomes 1 over 2 pi j contour integral over gamma gamma is implied what gamma shall be z to the n minus 1 dz and this is my inversion formula. It must be understood that gamma is not arbitrary, gamma is a circle of radius r where r is within the region of convergence. Now, in general given an x sub z, given an x sub z and its region of convergence you can always in you can always evaluate this integral and the evaluation of this integral is facilitated by Cauchy's residue theorem. That is if you enclose some poles, then the sum of the residues at these poles, that is what contributes to this, to this integral, the contour integration and therefore, contour integration is not as difficult as the expression looks like, all right. It looks like a, a, a difficult expression, but it is not and you can show that by taking uh, well known um, formulas like 1, mi 1 by 1 minus a z inverse. You can take the pole, take the residue and show that indeed they are identical. Fortunately, we do not have to appeal to this integral because in most of the practical cases, the function capital X of z is a rational function. If it is irrational, then in many cases, we might have to use the integral. There is no other way, all right. For example, in a distributed parameter, digital control system, all right, digital control, so x of n uh, signals are uh, discrete time sequences and you have to handle them by x of z, but if it is a distributed parameter, then e to the z might occur in capital X of z, e to the k z, where k could be positive or negative. There we have to, we have to appeal to this function, but in general, no. In general, unless the system is distributed, you do not have to appeal to this integral because x sub z is rational and if x sub z is rational then inversion if it is rational then inversion simply means that you expand this into partial fractions okay partial fractions of the form let's say ai by z minus zi all right and then invert term by term what is the inverse of a i by z minus z i? It depends on the R O C. Suppose the R O C is specified, then do you know the inverse of this? Yes, what is it? N U N F R O C is outermost in wrong. This is the inverse in the numerator also. Yes, and therefore what I want is, I do not want it to be expanded like this. One this is the point that I am talking. What I do is, what I want is a i divided by 1 minus z i z inverse. This is what I want. Then I know it is it's, uh, inverse transform the z i to the n u of n or z i to the n minus z i to the n u of minus n minus 1. So, what I want to do is partial fraction terms must be of this form and the trick is very simple. What we do is, what we do is we will make a partial fraction expansion, then we will multiply the numerator, multiply each term by z. So, what I do is I do not expand x sub z in partial fraction. What I do is I divide by z first. 
this I expand by partial fraction that is a i divided by z minus z i then obviously x sub z you understand the manipulation you first divide by z and therefore you get a i z over z minus z i which I can write as summation a i over 1 minus z i z inverse and this is my standard form. So, if x sub z is given as a rational function in uh, z then this is the this is the trick that you do. You first divide by z, expand in partial fraction in the usual manner, Laplace transform manner, and then and then invert term by term. Then multiply by z and invert term by term. <coughs> Shall we take an example? Okay, this is one of the examples from the book. One minus half z inverse divided by one plus three quarter z inverse plus 1 8 z to the minus 2 where the region of convergence is given as z greater than half. Now how do I expand this in partial fraction? Do I first convert it into a rational function in z then divide by z expand? Z inverse no. is going to some other variable. I can take it in the form of z inverse itself. You see that the numerator denominator is simply 1 plus half z inverse times 1 plus 1 quarter z inverse. Observation is the best equipment that an engineer has. If you observe carefully, have I told you that there is a difference between seeing and observing? No. No. This is the, this is what marks the difference between Sherlock Holmes and Dr. Watson. Sherlock Holmes always used to say, Watson, you see, you do not observe. I see, I also observe. If you observe this, then this rational function in z conversion is not necessary. You simply see that half times one quarter is one eighth and half and half plus one quarter is three fourth. And therefore, this is my expansion and now I can write a by one plus half z inverse plus b by one plus one quarter z inverse. And you can find out a and b in the usual manner. Well, there are also a point of caution if you try to find by multiplying by 1 plus half z inverse, then you have to put half z inverse equal to minus 1 in the expression. Now, many times this confuses people and this one makes mistake. So, in such cases, if you want to be a fail safe student, then it is better to make, it is better to find out the numerator and equate to 1 minus half z inverse. Whatever you do, with a little bit of practice, you can show, uh, you can do it without uh, carrying out all these uh, simultaneous equations and so on, but the result that I get is 1 plus half of the inverse uh, minus 3 divided by 1 plus 1 quarter z inverse and the region of convergence is given as mod z greater than half and therefore x of n, x of n must be right sided sequence and therefore it becomes 4 would somebody tell me what is the inversion of this half, what is to, the half to the power n u n, UN. then minus 3 into 1 minus half minus minus half. Half. ok caught before too much of harm is done it has to be minus half ok because in the standard thing it is 1 minus a z inverse it must be remembered similarly here minus 3 times 1 minus 1 quarter to the n u okay. on the other hand on the other hand if the roc if roc was an annular region between one third and half then what is your x of n? Minus 4 minus half n u minus n. Minus 4 <laughs> minus half to the n. Then u, minus n u of minus n minus 1. Same thing. <laughs> minus the same term. Quite so. I think the ROC has soaked in fairly well into the 205 plus. <laughs> now, I have, only, I have only showed you two methods for inversion. One is by direct integration and the other is by partial fraction expansion. Neither of them may be needed. In a given situation, neither of them may be needed. You might be able to do it in a simpler manner. So, won't this be 1 by 4 RSC? Which one? Yeah. 
थ्री टाइम्स माइनस वन बाई फोर ओ वन बाई फोर दिस इज वन बाई फोर एंड दिस इज हाफ आई बेग यूर फॉर यू हाउ कैन आई मेक सच मिस्टेक्स हाउ कैन यू अलाउ मी टू मेक सच मिस्टेक्स ओके आई एम प्राउड ऑफ यूर इन मेनी सिचुएशन द इन्वर्शन इंटीग्रल और पार्शियल फ्रैक्शन एक्सपांड इज नॉट नीडेड यू सी द ट्रिक इज द फॉलोइंग गिवन एक्स सब जी लेट से एस पी जी ओवर क्यू जी और मे बी पी वन जी इनवर्स ओवर क्यू वन जी इनवर्स ऑल दैट यू हैव टू डू इज टू एक्सप्रेस दिस एज ए सीरीज इट कुड बी ए फाइनेट सीरीज इट कुड बी एन इनफाइनेट सीरीज बट ऑल दैट यू नीड टू डू इज टू एक्सप्रेस दिस इन दिस फॉर्म लेट से ए जीरो प्लस ए वन जी इनवर्स एंड सो ऑन एंड ऑन दिस साइड a minus 1 z and so on somehow or other if you can express it in this form then obviously the sequence x of n is known it's not known in a closed form all that you know is x of 0 is a0 x of 1 is a1 x of minus 1 is a minus 1 you might have to then manipulate this further and apply a little bit of thinking to be able to find out a general form of x of n if it exists at all you may not be able to find it may exist you may not be able to find you may try that may not exist a closed form all right so somehow or other somehow or other if you can express it in this form then obviously the job is done and we should illustrate this procedure what we don't what shall we call it long division how can you obtain such a polynomial such a series obviously you divide pz by qc but you have this division is not blind is not blind division you have to keep your eyes open depending on what you want and we should illustrate this by two very simple example one is let's say x sub z we take the familiar example 1 minus a z inverse with mod z greater than mod a then we know that what we are asking for x of n is a right sided sequence if x of n is a right sided sequence then all we have to do is to express this in the form a1 z inverse plus a2 z to the minus 2 and so on isn't that right the roc itself specifies that it shall be a right sided sequence like this and all that we have to do is to express this in this form now what we do is i of course know what is 1 minus a z inverse to the minus 1 but in the general the general situation would be that if i cannot do this by inspection then what i do is i make a long division that is i divide 1 by 1 minus a z inverse and you can see that the result would be 1 plus a z inverse plus a squared z to the minus 2 and so on is this point clear you make a long division and express this as a series in z inverse then you you can identify the values of x of n you can easily see that this is x of 0 this is x of 1 this is x of 2 and so on and it's very easy to see that x of n is a to the n then u this is the result that we already know a to the n u n do, do you understand the the procedure the procedure is that first you, you uh put your uh, microscope on the region of convergence converge on the region of convergence and decide what should be the form this is extremely important because uh, if i have if i have the same function 1 by 1 minus a z inverse with uh, let's say mod z less than mod a then obviously i'm asking for a left sided sequence and the long division has now to be modified in other words what i am asking for is is a0 uh, plus let's say a1z plus a2z squared and so on this is what i am asking for because it's a left sided sequence and is negative and therefore you must modify your long division procedure and the procedure is minus az inverse plus 1 shall now divide 1 all right and you can see that it would be 
the result would be minus a inverse z, the first term minus minus plus a times a inverse z inverse z will be 1, then minus a to the minus 2 z squared and so on. All right, and you can see you are lucky because uh, the pattern is obvious, the pattern is clear and you can see that x of n in general shall be with a negative sign, minus is already there, a to the power, yes, a to the power minus n, minus n, u of minus n minus 1, u of minus n minus 1. Is that okay? Is that okay? So, n is negative. So, what is the logic behind taking it uh, to be dividing it by the negative of that? So, dividing for it? For LSS, why, why, do we, why are we do changing our uh, long division method? Oh, because what I want is this. I want powers of z which are positive, not negative. <coughs> I want a, poly, a series in z, not in z inverse. And that's why I have modified by method of inversion, method of long division. In in general, you have to start from the highest power here, and then you will get a, such a series. One has to be careful in this. This is perhaps the simplest method, long division, provided you determine correctly which way you are going to make the division. All right. This procedure is not necessarily confined to rational functions. It can be applied to irrational functions also. For example, <coughs> what procedure? Not long division. Somehow long division is just one method of obtaining a series. There are other methods. For example, if it is a standard function, e to the z, then you know it is, uh, you do not have to make a long division. What are you going to make a long division about? If it is e to the z, you know this, you know it is a standard form. If it is a log z, you know the standard form. So, no long division is needed. You might be able to manipulate the given function in such a manner that its expansion is obvious. You may not have to make a long division. All right. As an example, let us take this example log of 1 plus a z inverse with mod z greater than mod a. Obviously, what we are looking for is a right sided sequence a right sided sequence because mod z greater than mod a sorry <coughs> does it make sense the log expansion when is it valid less than 1 the mod of this must be less than 1 which is equivalent to mod z greater than mod a in other words uh, we can find out the x of n we know that log of 1 plus x, yes, what is the? 1 minus x minus x square by 2. Is there a 1? No, 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 x square by 2 plus x square by 2. That is correct. 3 and so on, 2 infinity. And therefore, log of 1 plus a z inverse, I can write it in a closed form like this. Infinity n equal to 1, there is no constant term in log of 1 plus x n equal to 1, I get minus 1 to the power n plus 1, all right, a to the n, z to the minus n divided by n. Is that, does that check? The sign? Yeah, okay. And therefore, what is x of n then? If this is your, this is your summation, x of n obviously is minus 1 to the power n plus 1 divided by n a to the n u of n minus 1, u of n minus 1 which I can write in a slightly uh, more elegant form uh, by taking a minus sign here minus 1 to the power 1 outside then minus 1 to the n absor absorb it in a to the power n then you get uh, minus a to the power n minus a to the power n divided by n u of n minus 1. All right. Can you get from log 1 plus a z inverse n inverse a sequence when mod z 
is less than mod A. No. no. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. You can't apply the formula, but you can do something so that you can apply the formula. Let's say mod z, did I say less than? Less than mod a. Then I can write this as log of a z inverse plus log of inverse z a 1 plus a inverse z. And obviously, this can be expanded in an infinite series. And I can invert term by term. Obviously, what you are asking for is an LSS, left sided sequence. What about this term, log of AZ inverse? What is the inverse of this? Which definition? That is correct. That's what we have to do. But does the inverse of this exist? If AZ inverse mod a z inverse is now greater than 1. Does the does this exist? Does the inverse transform exist? Yes, it does. How can you say it does? It may. Oh, it may. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very clever way of answering a question. Well, um, what about the expansion of log x? Is there an expansion of log x? <laughs> and you again enter into the x plus one minus x. you enter into the into the do loop. Yeah. You again get a log of one plus x. So log <laughs> one. Where do you stop? <laughs> All right. I leave this class with this problem for you. Yeah. I'll I'll speak about it. <laughs>